The American College of Medical Informatics of the American Medical Informatics Association presents the 2001 Morris F. Collin Award to Professors Howard Bleich and Warner Slack. The Morris F. Collin Award is given each year, when appropriate, to pioneers in the field of medical informatics who best exemplify the teachings and practice of Morris Collin. This year's recipients, Howard Bleich and Warner Slack, have been co-presidents of the Center for Clinical Computing at Harvard Medical School and partners for over 30 years. They've pioneered work in medical consultation, patient computer dialogue, and hospital-wide clinical computing systems. The work of these two has taken place principally at Boston's Beth Israel Hospital. Howard Bleich arrived at Harvard and Beth Israel in 1967. He was joined by Warner Slack in 1970. Since then, the two Harvard professors have created, among other things, an integrated hospital computing system, which is a model for many other institutions. Howard Bleich was born in Atlanta, Georgia in 1934, but grew up in Washington, D.C., where his father worked for the Washington Terminal Company and his mother ran a dry cleaning and laundry business. He was the oldest of three sons, all of whom became doctors. His childhood interests in chemistry included synthesizing organic explosives. He graduated from George Washington University and then went on to get his MD from Emory University. Further up the East Coast, Warner Slack was born in East Orange, New Jersey in 1933. His father was a nuclear physicist who worked on the Manhattan Project. The family moved to Pennsylvania, and Warner graduated from Mount Lebanon High School, where he minored in basketball and football. At Princeton, he played junior varsity football and picked up his degree, and then got his MD from Columbia. Both Howard and Warner served in the Air Force in the 60s. Warner was with a mass unit at Clark Air Force Base in the Philippines, and Howard served part of his service time in Japan. Following his Air Force service, Warner went to the University of Wisconsin in Madison in the departments of medicine and computer science. It was here that, in conjunction with other members of the Department of Medicine, he developed the first computer-based medical history system in which the computer could engage in an interactive dialogue with a patient. The computer program created so much interest that it was the subject of a documentary on what was then called National Educational Television, a forerunner of PBS. The computer communicated via questions, explanations, requests, and comments. The evaluation of the technique showed that the computer interview elicited more information than traditional questionnaire and interviewing methods. But the thing that really uh, that, that, that occurred to me, the, the main observation that, that I had at that time was that this, this man, for the first time in his experience as a patient, was in control of the process and was really uh, enjoying that. And at the end of the interview, the teletype machine started to click. And he said, what is that? And I said, well, it's printing out the, the summary of the things that you told the computer, the way we programmed it. And he said, well, may I read it? And I couldn't think of any reason why he shouldn't. And I think that was the first time at the University of Wisconsin Hospitals that a patient was granted the opportunity to read his own medical record. And at the same time, at Harvard and Beth Israel, Howard Bleich was also developing a computer program. His first study, Computer Evaluation of Acid-Based Disorders, is now widely recognized as a pioneering work in the field of expert systems in medicine. Although this program wasn't called artificial intelligence, the term wasn't in common use then, many of the characteristics of artificial intelligence programs were present in this early work. The 3500 medical rules in this expert system are comparable to those in artificial intelligence programs in medicine being studied today. In 1970, Warner was lured away from the University of Wisconsin to come to Harvard and Beth Israel to work with Howard. It's a partnership that has lasted. The combination or the combo uh, of these two is really quite a remarkable, maybe, maybe unique in, in all of uh, academic history. 
uh, Howard invited, uh, as I understand it, invited Warner to join him at, at uh, Harvard and made him an exact equal. And they worked as exact equals. They had different strengths and they specialized to sort of independently. They each had some work they only did alone. Uh, but it was really quite remarkable. They didn't, they, sitting together talking, they were comfortable, they were collaborative, they were supportive, they were stronger together because of their both working together. Uh, I, I, there aren't many many pairs that, that I know of who, who could pull that off or who have ever pulled that off. Uh, the two of them set up a laboratory at that time which was called the Laboratory for Computer Medicine and um, they started uh, independently working on their own projects. Warner on uh, uh, what he called uh, patient computer dialogue and Howard on expert systems and consultation with the uh, computer systems. Howard Bleich and Warner Slack, when they uh, joined uh, forces at the Beth Israel, had about 10,000 um, articles that they had ripped from various medical journals. At that time, they started putting these articles into a uh, database, which they subsequently called Paper Chase. Um, this allowed uh, them to search uh, for articles for teaching rounds and uh, for reasons of their own personal research. They used to read current contents every week and send postcards to collect the reprints. And after I had about four or five thousand reprints, I couldn't find them. And I filed them as best I could. And then we had a computer laboratory so one day I asked one of the programmers if he could write us a computer program to help me start the reprint, find the reprints. And that's how it got started. We put um, a terminal in my office, and at night the house staff started coming there and searching the literature, taking my reprints, not always returning them. And then one day one of the residents said, we should move the terminal to the hospital library. And we then got a grant from the National Library of Medicine to expand the, uh, the file, not only to my reprints, but to the library collection. We put a terminal in the library. And to our surprise, within a year, our hospital became the largest searcher of the Medline database in the world. Paper Chase is available now in 60 countries. It's uh, actively promoted in the United States and Canada, and it's available over um, CompuServe and TimeNet, SprintNet um, in the United States, um, DataPack in Canada, OSPAC in Australia, throughout the world over Internet. It's available on about 40 different gateways. The Center for Clinical Computing, set up by Howard and Warner starting way back when, has now computerized every department of the Beth Israel and Brigham and Women's Hospitals. The system serves the needs of physicians, nurses, house staff, and other hospital personnel, as well as patients themselves. At Beth Israel, these two crafted uh, one of the world-class, best clinical computing systems of all time. This system was the most reliable, the most loved, the most comprehensive of any system of its time. It was really the Toyota of clinical systems. Uh, Howard invented, at least to my understanding, uh, some major, major technology to make this work. It was a clustered system, and I believe it was also a memory sharing system long before this, this kind of technology was commercially available. The availability of this kind of information and its automatic entry into the transaction between patient and doctor really are a very legitimate part of medical inquiry. And I am constantly just uh, overwhelmed at the ease with which information is uh, made available to people who are taking care of patients. The computer programs reach outside the hospital, too. One is a dietary counseling program. Carmen Alicia has been using one of Dr. Slack's programs to help her lose weight. It's like a computer's talking to you, just the way it was set up. And it will just take you step by step. Carmen uses this program two to three times a week. She's lost 40 pounds in a year and has gone from a size 14 to a size 6, all without visiting a doctor or support group. How is this more helpful than, say, going to 
just a class on nutrition. I can see what I'm doing wrong here on paper. Carmen has gotten so comfortable with the program, she often calls it a he, without ever having met the program designers. It had some cute, really cute jokes, too. It's like telling you that not to feel guilty, because if you ate a candy bar or, or you know, something like you felt like you went off the wall, it's like, okay. If the, the writing is done wisely and well, patients enjoy this. I consider myself lucky. Uh, I've had uh, the privilege of working with Howard and Bleich and Warner Slack for over uh, two decades. Um, they're really both uh, unique individuals but operate uh, in a, um, a very interesting way as a team. In some ways they seem like an odd couple. Uh, on the surface they couldn't be more different. Uh, Howard uh, is quite meticulous. Um, he has a very ordered desk. Uh, he has computer files for everything, including jokes that he uses in uh, speeches. Uh, Warner, on the other hand, uh, doesn't wear a watch. Uh, we all know in the laboratory that uh, not to give Warner the, l the only copy of anything that's important because it will get lost on his desk. I first met uh, Warner Slack uh, in the early 70s when I was a medical student at Duke. I was developing a questionnaire uh, for patients who had headache and uh, Warner had, um, had developed uh, similar kind of questionnaires and he was uh, willing to um, share them, give us actually the source code um, so that we could see um, how he had uh, made this work. Um, in the early 70s when I was trying to build um, a model of a consulting program. Uh, Howard was willing to give Ed Hammond and me the complete source code of his acid base system so that we could reprogram it in a different language and he gave us 50 test cases so that it made sure that it worked um, the way it was supposed to. So this total openness and collaboration I think has marked um, their, their style. This is a very generous thing in today's um, uh, climate, it would be unheard of uh, for a researcher to give uh, their computer code away uh, now that we're all so concerned about intellectual property and, and, uh, and the like. Uh, well, that was never the way that Howard and Warner uh, operated. Uh, they were really uh, uh, generous uh, and uh, they were deeply concerned about every person that worked with them. Uh, and this is reflected in the kinds of computer programs that they were able to develop, that, that uh, human quality comes through in the way that they um, uh, taught us to uh, design uh, computer programs and interact with uh, other humans. Well, it's fun to have a chance to congratulate Howard Bleich and Warner Slack on receiving the Colin Medal. Uh, certainly, they're uh, well-deserved and a happy occasion. Warner and I, of course, were together at the College of Physicians and Surgeons. Our wives were friends, and so we've had a lot of the same background, and, and I think a lot of mutual appreciation. It's been fun for me to see his meteoritic career, and uh, this may be, if not the, the apex, well, we hope at least a highlight. In, in the case of Howard, I really first met him actually through NLM. I was on the study section many years ago, and I was the primary reviewer of Howard's proposal to make what ended up being called a paper chase. And uh, I don't remember who were the other reviewers, but I do remember that I was able to defend it before the study section on the grounds that certainly this was going to be an honest piece of work. If it worked, it would be well reported. If it didn't work, it would be honestly reported. And that it was a good thing for NLM to, uh, to have an alternative plan B for users to have another way to get at Medline. And, of course, he's made a grand success of the work. I think summing up their contributions um, are this real focus on how to use a computer to do things that help real people, be their patients or be their physicians. Warner Slack has a uh, saying about people. Uh, he describes them as being someone who he would like to have in a foxhole uh, next to him during a time of stress or, or battle. I can think of no two people 
other than Howard Bleich and Warner Slack, who I'd rather have in a foxhole next to me uh, at a time of stress. Uh, they're generous, warm uh, human beings. They're great men. Uh, I can think of no two people more deserving uh, to be this year's co-recipients of the Morris Collin Award.